Hey everyone, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. And before we get started today, I just wanted to wish everyone a belated happy St. Patrick's Day. Sorry I couldn't get a video out yesterday. This is our really busy time at work, and I know a lot of you don't care about any of that, but that's why my upload schedule has been a little bit delayed between some health issues and uh, our busy time at work. So I do apologize about that, but wanted to wish everybody a belated St. Patrick's Day. Hope everyone had a great time. In today's case, we are going to be going to New Jersey actually an area very close to where I grew up so I'm very familiar with this area and the part of the area which is called the Pine Barrens now this is sort of in the central which goes down to the southern part of Jersey and it is a very dense wooded area it's got a lot of legends surrounding it there's a lot of eerie things I got to tell you growing up in and around this area just knowing the stories and everything about it you know there's the legend of the Jersey Devil that's why a lot of the Jersey teams are called the Devils there's been a lot of weird things that have happened in this area. It's just very spooky things. And of course, there's the you know legends or theories that the mob is tends to bring their deceased people there and hide them because it is such a dense and rugged area. If you can imagine sort of like a jungle type area without the jungle animals. I mean, that's how dense and thick it is. You could literally be walking right next to somebody that was lying on the ground and you wouldn't see them because it is so dense and thick, especially from the main seasons between spring and all the way up basically through December. Um, it's just how it is. Now, this case takes us back to November of 2021, so just a few months back. And Gary, 67, and Lorraine Parker, who was only 60 at the time, they were last reported seen on November 17th of November or 2021. And they were fine. They were a loving couple. They were living there for years. They were living right next to the Pine Barrens. They had an ATV. They loved to go out for walks. Now, according to one of their neighbors, he said that, yeah, they were just everyday normal people that were great to talk to. And unfortunately, they weren't reported missing by until November 22nd. So quite a few days, almost four days after they were last seen. So unfortunately, that's never a good thing. They were reported missing by one of their daughters. And once they were reported missing, the search obviously got started right away. Over 100 volunteers, which included police officers, firefighters, uh, obviously search and rescue uh, detectives were on the case but again this area is so vast and so dense i'm going to show you a picture um, this picture right here is an aerial view of one of the densest parts of the pine barrens now obviously you can't see what it would look like if you were walking through it but i've been in and around a lot of areas and the pine barrens is one place i don't particularly like i find it spooky and eerie but this couple was just it was an everyday average day right before thanksgiving and they were out on a a ride on their atv and in a lot of the parts of the pine barrens you really can't get through it without an off-road vehicle such as an atv and they were out on their atv and that was the last anyone ever saw of them now a lot of atv accidents when they do happen what happens is the atv will turn over and the person will get trapped underneath it but that's not what happened in this case. So, But I just wanted to mention that because it, it is important. So unfortunately, the officers and search and rescue had a huge task on their hand. Now, the police detective in charge is named Vaughn. He said that his detectives and investigators from even the prosecutor's office, they searched hundreds of acres of the Pine Barrens. They got the police department's ATV unit involved, and they also teamed up with the Ocean County Sheriff's Department, their ATV unit. They conducted hours and hours of off-road searches in the Warren Grove area. Then they had to get the, now these are some pictures of when they were originally starting out. Like I said, they originally started on foot with their grid searches, but a grid search on foot in areas like this is it's can be effective, but unfortunately, it's also very ineffective. Even the, the pe people involved, Captain James Vaughn told the media that it's just a walking grid search is almost impossible in this type of environment. So that's why they brought in the off-road vehicles. And then they, have, they had to bring in the New Jersey State Police Aviation Unit. And unfortunately, even through all this, this effort, you know, the ATVs were getting stuck. They were getting, you know, stuck in the mud and all kinds of problems because of the, the terrain. The air um, aviation unit was having problems because really looking down through this 
canopy of trees and flora and fauna, it's almost impossible to see something. So following their search, they turned it over to the detectives in the Ocean County Prosecutor's Office, and they decided to obviously bring in dogs. And of course, the dog units just kind of went in circles and it's not their fault unfortunately in these type of environments it's almost impossible for a dog to be affected i'm not saying it can't but because of these type of terrain there's so much water there's so much mud that raining on and off different days so the dog teams weren't effective and then they finally brought in after the air support failed they decided to bring in various drones now they used drones from two different counties because the first drone attempt was ineffective and really at this point they had been searching for over a week that's when the stafford police brought in a specialized drone and that is when they actually found something and this is where the case gets really bizarre they actually found the couple lying down right next to each other only about two to 250 yards away from their homes even the police detective said that a drone had to have been used to find their bodies he said that their departments had located them in an area that they had searched a couple of times on foot but it was would have been impossible to see them the drones are what found them he said that also the bizarre thing was they found their atv a few yar yards away from them and on the atv was mr parker's shotgun and supplies it was almost like they had just gotten off the atv walked maybe 20 to 30 feet and just passed away but the other odd thing was the according to the investigators was that they were just lying down next to each other now detective vaughn and the other detective said that based on what the medical examiner's office said that there was no foul play based on what they saw they did an examination examination of the area where the parkers were found he said there was no obvious signs pointed into anything that may have caused the couple's deaths they couldn't figure it out it was just like these two nice people had just gotten off their atv and walked off and died of course once the remains were found they brought in special cadaver teams and different dog teams to search in and around the area to look for any other clues but even those searches came up with nothing and the detective vaughn told the asbury park press he said it wasn't even an atv crash which is what they're normally used to seeing which what I was saying about before is the normal thing that happens with ATVs are they topple over, the people are injured, they can't get up, something like that. But the ATV was only parked, you know, whatever, 20 feet away from them. Even more bizarre was inside the Parker's home, they found a cane belonging to Lorraine. Now, she, oh, she had mobility issues, so she had to walk with this cane, yet she hadn't brought it with her. They said that the area where they found them and even where the ATV was, the thicket was so thick, but it was only about 200 yards from their house. So the Parkers were very obviously very familiar with this area. And based on what they could see, there was no obvious cause of death. And we still don't know to this day. And for you cynics out there, the Parkers were known as happy people. They had kids. They had no problems with alcohol or drugs. They were kind. Their neighbors said that they were always willing to talk. They were friendly. They're, they, you know, they didn't have any financial problems. So those of you that are thinking, you know, suicide, it's not fair just to jump right to that. Obviously, it's always a possibility. But unfortunately, the medical examiner, what they have said up to this day is they won't have a, a determinate answer for even maybe possibly another month. It's possible even longer because according to their original findings, the initial autopsy results showed no tox in their toxicology, but extended tox screens and extended autopsies take a long time to send those type of labs out once they rule out the basic things that you would normally test for. But, you know, unfortunately, there's hundreds of things that they actually can test for. And from what I understand, this is what I understand. So if I'm mistaken, you please correct me. But a lot of those tests can take months. And according to what the police said, the police in this case said that they don't even know if they'll ever have an answer because of the way they found them, the way the couple was just lying down next to each other, almost like they were sleeping, the way they found the ATV, the contents of their home, None None of it made any sense. The fact that this all took place in the Pine Barrens, to me at least, I know a lot of you probably won't appreciate it, but 
it's just a very, very eerie place. I would rather hike by myself. 95% of the time I'm hiking by myself in California, Oregon, Washington, all over the Appalachian Trail. And I would hi rather hike any of those places by myself, places where there's mountain lions and bears or whatever, than hike and camp alone in parts of the Pine Barrens. And don't call it, it's not superstitious. It's just, to me, it's just got a very eerie feel. And maybe that's because I grew up around the area with all the stories and legends. But even when you drive through it, there's areas of the parkway that drive past it. It's just a very spooky place. And I don't know why. It just... I guess you'd have to see it to believe it, but there are some marked trails and places where you can go and walk your dog and things like that, but the place where the Parkers were found was not one of those places. It was, like I said, in the thickest part of the Pine Barrens, and I just, it's, it's a miracle that between, I mean, the Ocean County office, the Warren Grove Fire Company, and the state police, they did an absolutely amazing job. And they, after the, all their main efforts failed, the fact that they brought in the drones, I just, my hat's off to them for, because it's a miracle that they were able to find them. And my thoughts and prayers go out to the whole Parker family. And I hope that Gary and Lorraine will get some answers or justice or whatever happened to them. I hope their family will get the answers and justice and closure that they need because none of this story makes any sense. And obviously, I want to dedicate this video to Gary and Lorraine Parker, all the investigative agencies who helped find them and are still working to find out what happened to them. And of course, to their kids and all their friends and other family, just hoping that you will get the answers that you need and deserve soon. I'm not trying to fear monger. The Pine Barrens can be a beautiful place. It is a beautiful place and it can be a beautiful place to visit. So if you'd like to see it, definitely look at it. To me, it's just not one of my favorite places to go hiking or camping. I want to thank you all for watching as always. And again, happy belated St. Patrick's Day. Special thank you to co.ag for providing the background music. And I will see you all in the next one. Take care. Hey everyone, thanks for sticking with me to the end. And I just wanted to say thank you for all those that are being patient with the upload schedule. Like I said, it's just been craziness lately, but I did get the email back up and running. The only bad news is about 98% of the emails are gone, but I'll have that in the description. So if you wanna send me an email, but unfortunately if you had sent me one, most likely it's not there. But I just wanted to say thank you for everybody for all your support and being a subscriber. And I always look forward to all your comments and messages and just thank you so much. Regards to the email, I will be traveling across country starting in early May. So if there's an area or case that you'd like me to check out, please send me an email or comment so I can add it to my list. I will be taking probably a southern route across and then on my way back a northern route. So I will be able to hit the majority of the different states and I have no problem with making a detour. If you have a case you want me to check out, I'll be stopping and volunteering with different searches if there are them. And then I will also be researching different cases that I will be also exploring on this channel with all of you guys. So definitely let me know if there's a case that you're interested in or you know about, or even if it's just somebody that you know that it went missing. It doesn't have to be someone that went missing in the woods, just any, any case you'd like me to explore, just let me know and I will research it for you.